Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Star Mixes here. Uh, before I get into my latest video, what that's going to be about, I did need to correct an error that I made in one of my previous videos. In the video, God Favors Atheist, I said that the reason Osama bin Laden attacked America on 9-11 was because that he felt that our culture was polluting Islam. Well, one of my subscribers pointed out to me that that's in fact not the case, that he did issue a statement saying that the reason that he attacked the United States was actually because of our support for Israel. And that if it were for the pollution, for what he saw as the pollution of, to Islam, he would have attacked Sweden. So I'd like to thank that person very much for pointing out my error. And uh, while I do do, while I do do thorough research to of all my points in my videos, I did miss that fact, even though it has absolutely no bearing on any of the points of my video. Okay, so what this video is going to be about is basically about ridiculous beliefs that Islam has. Now, of course, Islam as a religion is ridiculous as a whole, but these certain beliefs that I'm going to talk about are extremely ridiculous, even more so than the rest of the religion. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, back when I was a Muslim, Allah, bar, Allah, bar, I used to actually believe that these things, and it's just kind of, it's funny to just show how deluded one can be when it comes to religion. Belief number one, brushing your teeth with a stick brings good luck. Now, of course people will think, oh, he's making this up, but no, no, no. If we look at the Hadith, Volume 3, Book 31, Number 154, from Bukhari, which means authentic, Aisha said, and the Prophet said, that Siwak, which means brushing your teeth with a stick, is purification for the mouth, and it is a way of seeking Allah's pleasures. Ada said, there is no harm in swallowing the resultant saliva. Now, just so you know what a sitwalk, sitwalk is, here's mine, I never used it, but it's a, it's a stick, and you chew it, and basically use it to clean your teeth with. As you can see, it says here in the label, Plilu Miswak, nature's gift for total oral care. Now, the common Muslim defense against this will be, well, you're, you're worshipping Allah by protecting His creation, which is your body, and keeping your mouth clean. However, most scholars agree that even though we have better methods of cleaning our mouths, for example, toothpaste, they still agree that Allah is most pleased with this crude middle-aged method of cleaning one's teeth. Ridiculous belief number two. Genies snatch things when you sleep. Again, volume four, book 54, number 533, Bukhari Hadith. This is, so it means it's totally authenticated. You can't weasel the way out of, out of that with it, with that excuse. Says, narrated Jabbar bin Abdullah. The prophet said, cover your utensils and tie your water skins and close your doors and keep your children close to you at night as the jinn spread out at such time to snatch things away when you go to bed put out your lights for the mischief doer may drag away the wick of the candle and burn the dwellers of the house Ada said the devils instead of the jinns ridiculous fact number three Allah made the stars as missiles to throw at devils. The Quran clearly states in Surah 67 verse 5, And we have from of old adorned the lowest heaven with lamps, stars, and we have made such lamps, stars, as missiles to drive away the evil ones, and have prepared them the penalty of the blazing fire. Ridiculous fact number four. Meteors are simply angels attacking genies. Book 26, number 5538 in the Muslim collection, 
merely states, when the dwellers of the heaven seek information from them until this information reaches the heaven of the world. In this process of transmission, the genie snatches what he manages to overhear and carries it to his friends. And when the angels see the genie, they attack him with meteors. If they narrate only which they manage to snatch, that is correct, but they alloy it with lies and make additions to it. Now, to the Muslims who take this shit literally, there's really nothing they can do. I've used nothing but authentic Hadith sources and your own Quran. Now, the moderate Muslim defense will be, Oh, well, jinns are just metaphors. You can't take that stuff literally. That's just God's way of explaining to men how the universe works. But this is bullshit. For Malik's Compidium clearly states, Book 51, number 51.4.10, Yahya related to me from Malik, that Yahya even said, when the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, was taken on the ninth journey, he saw an evil jinn seeking him with a torch of fire. Whenever the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, turned, he saw him. Jabril, the angel, said to him, Shall I teach you some words to say? When you say them, his torch will be put out, and will will fail from him. The Messenger of Allah, may peace, I'm sorry, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said, Yes, indeed. Jibril said, Say, I seek refuge with the noble face of Allah, and with complete words of Allah, which neither the good person nor the corrupt can exceed, from the evil which descends from the sky, and the evil which ascends in it. And from the evil what is of what is created in the earth, and the evil what comes out of it, and from the trails of the night and the day, and the visitations of the night and the day, except for one that knocks with good, O merciful. So, it is more than obvious that these creatures are meant to be literal beings, that literally exist and can be seen. So, the obvious question to the Muslims is, where are these jinns now? 